let's spend a few minutes here talking about geo-dispersed networking, starting with our site. So our site itself, we have servers and network and storage and things of that nature. We're going to really focus on servers and the virtual machines associated with those servers. So let's draw out a few servers here and the virtual machines. Now, why do we focus on the virtual machines? Because in a cloud environment, which many of our environments are going to, it's really a virtual infrastructure. So we're going to need to have those virtual machines be portable between site A, represented here in the lower right, as the Capitol building there, and site B, which is the cloud. So we need to be able to have that. Well, the dependencies on those virtual machines is going to be the challenge for you. And in your environments today, you may be running a 10.120.12.3 environment, just bogus numbers here, and your cloud may be running a 10.190.1.33. Well, if you ship a virtual machine relationship from a VM to storage to that remote site with the, out, with the IP schema of your host site, it's not going to work. So what do you need? You need a geographically neutral IP schema that allows you to have a common thread of IP. And you do that through software-defined networking. So you place a software-defined environment, your virtual machine and all of your IP addressing on that site get a geo-shared IP. That's just a name I'm using for this video. It's not an official name. But it's a like IP address that you can use from a host site represented in the lower right here with an SDN controller to a target site, a cloud, with a VM that serves as the SDN in that cloud environment because it could be a public cloud. But now let's talk about what happens when you put a private cloud. Does that make a difference? It doesn't. Whether we have a private cloud running VMs or whether we have an architecture running VMs, the ability to geographically fail over to a secondary site quickly and easily is going to be dependent on many variables, right? Got to replicate the storage, the virtual machine, all of that stuff. But the big, long hole in the tent is going to be this IP infrastructure. How do I effectively fail over my 10.120 to a 10.190 subnet area? Very difficult to do without the implementation of a software-defined networking solution and that controller that's associated with SDN. And so when we talk about this dependency, what really are we talking about when we talk about IP impact in any environment and why uh, geographically failing over is, is a difficult task? Well, all of these things that we're going to draw on the board here, the physical server with the virtual machines running on it, it specifically addresses storage for its virtual machines. How? Typically via IP. Software applications that run in the environment, many of them are IP-oriented as well as security controls that you may bring up within your environment are going to look for specific IP schemas. Changing those IP schemas is a security risk and needs to be reported. So how do we do this more consistently? We do this and be able to reach out all of these devices are impacted by IP using SDN.